Hey yo, we're back with our next episode of Shrimp, our fantasy text based RPG. Uh, last time we encountered another shadow pad, which is crazy. Um, they're everywhere. We know shadow magic, but it never lets me use shadow magic to close a shadow pad. Um, but yeah, this village was being plagued by this beast, which was a farce. It was a fake beast. Um, really was a troll. Uh, cause, and the guy had killed the beast already, but then we killed that guy who was trying to open shadow gates and all that, so. Fun adventure. Went a little long, but that's okay. Uh, so we have one more in this section of Trithic. So we're gonna start there. Hey, thanks so much for hanging out and joining me. Let's go. Attack on Ashley. Inbark. The dark haired, plainly attired man sat seated across from you in a small, hopeless, squalid pillow bed. And he said, Trithic seems upon first glance to be much too young to be a master spellcaster. After only a few minutes of speaking with him, however, you're convinced that he's indeed a major of great skill and a man who has travelled a long way to seek you out. Tyramy casually clasped his hands and lay, lays them on the table. He seems unaffected by the surrounding din of the bustling establishment, and you note know for the first time that he has yet to even glance at the steamy mug of pale resting between them. I'm fortunate to have found you, Alison, he says. I'm surprised to learn that you have been in initiated in the circle, though I must say that that it pleases me. You well deserve reputation and known to us, of course, and you're precisely the person we need for a rather delicate task at hand. Or you can ask what the task is, and why is it that Tyranny, a master mage hailing from Asphere, the city of the Grey Mage, you turn take his second upon himself to visit you here in Trithic, the young man launches into a brief but detailed encounter of the events that led him to this clandestine meeting. Alright, I mean the Grey Circle. Yes, that's what I thought. Grey Mage. Okay. Learn that Tyramy has travelled to teach her from the city of Asphere in the southern reaches of the, of the northern Shrith of northern Shrith with hopes of capturing the renegade sorceress by the name of Coral Toll. He tells you that Coral Toll recently escaped into Tisa from after attempting to stage a coup against the Grey Mage. She fled, oh, it's a lady, into Fogba Forest, he says, his voice adopting a grim tone as he utters the name of the Forsaken Wood. We tracked her to the edge of that wood, but were forbidden to enter it in pursuit of her. Coral Toll is the most powerful and dangerous <laughs> Is most, both powerful and dangerous, and is it was summarily decided that the curse we placed upon her to prevent her from ever leaving Fogba. Tyrion tells you that the Grey Mage placed the curse upon the sorceress, a curse of death that would be fulfilled if Corotol ever left the forest into which she fled. The curse was only meant to allow us the time required to plot her extraction. To the young man, his steely gaze fixed on you, Corotol must eventually be returned to a sphere where she will be made to stand trial for her crimes. It is unfortunate, however, that while the curse will keep her confined into the misty wood, it affects if a magic may in sense be able to reach beyond its borders indeed also has already done so. Her Ocarin are on the march. Ocaruk. <coughs> what an Ocaruk. Please tell me. <laughs> the Ocaruk, an ancient Alvarian word that tr roughly translates to Oaken Pawn, is named given to wood and iron beings created by Cora Toll, a powerful fortress whose misdeeds resulted in a banishment from the Grey Circle and a subsequent exile in the cursed forest of Fogba. Okorak are generally slender human sized beings crafted out of a combination of wood and iron. Magically animated Okorak have only very limited intellectual capacity. Their actions are mostly fully controlled by the creator and the directives and instructions that were infused into it into the being at the time of their creation. As they are largely mindless, Okorak are relentless in fearless combatants, making them formidable foes. One of the more sinister traits of these strange beings is their ability to discern the tactics of the enemy combatants and mimic them, thus placing themselves in their equal footing with their foes in battle. Due to the powerful magic that courses through them, the world are exceptionally strong. While they can employ a wide variety of weaponry, these wood and iron beings often fight unarmed. Okorok emit an anti-magic field and tend to defeat magic that is used against them. Coral Toll infuses her creations with this ability prior to her unsuccessful coup against the Grey Mage. It is now believed that the only place one might hope to find Okorok is within the depths of Fogba Forest. Following her attempt to coup 
Cord tore fled to the bog bog in the remnants of her Ogrek army, and in the aftermath of her Coral Tall's treacherous act, Grey Mage is said to have placed a powerful death curse on the renegade sorcerer's brother, exiling her. Okay. Timmy tells you that the Coral Toll, a master of several magical disciplines, has long been suspected to have required fish in the ancient dark art of goblin magic. While the practice of such magic is forbidden by the Great Circle, the ambitious sorcerer secretly acquired her dark knowledge and put it to use constructing the foundation of her sinister endeavors. She created a race of wooden round beings which have become known as Ogorok, says Timmy. Many hundreds of Ogorok are creating were created in secrecy and brought to, to life with the magic. They formed a powerful army guided only by her command, an army that has overthrown the Great Mage and ultimately plunged much of this world that were, that was to overthrow the Great Mage and ultimately plunge much of this world into chaos. I don't think I ever the peril upon the brink of which we have nimbly danced these past few months. Intrigued by the master Major's account, you asked him about Coral Toll's stage coup and the Ocker Rock. The coup was discovered just before Coral Toll's most sinister plans were set afoot. He said, Swift action and no small measure of good fortune disrupted her efforts and helped us to rout her army of Ocker Rock. She fled north and we tracked her into the very edge of Fogball. The remnants of her wooden army, perhaps five dozen Ocker Rock, dwelt, delved into the cursed wood with her. Jimmy tells you that it is believed that a handful of conspirators aided Coral tools escape in that when discovered they will certainly face trial and likely death. You ask him why it is he sought you out. Coral tools Okorok are on the march, he said, repeating what he told you only moments ago. There has been an incident in Ashley. Listen with the growing horror as Trimmy Tyranny tells you relates to you the details of the incident that's only just taken place in the town of Ashley. On the eastern edge of the Fog Ball Forest. He tells you that a large force of Okorok emerged from the misty wood and attacked Ashley only two days ago. The relentless Okorok quickly overran the town's mega defenses and sent its citizenry fleeing south. A few brave souls, including most of Ashley's militia, stayed behind to battle the fearsome wood and iron beings, but they were ultimately defeated by the mindless, merciless. Merci merciless pawns of Coral Toll. I arrived with my own company, but was too late to do anything on the town's behalf, said Tyranny, turning at a glance. A group of men issuing a pen, and then after sending them from me, he turns back to you, seemingly disregarding any sudden notion you might have had about them. The town's folks are safe. They're encamped in the hills south of Fogball and are presently under guard of those in my company. I don't believe there are any others who have yet known the attack on Ashia, and for now it would be a bit of all involved that it remain that way. This is some setup for this. Timmy tells you that he and his company have tracked Coral Toll to Bogbo with designs on attempting to attract her for the wedding return to Aspire, where she was sent trial for the crown. This he now reveals is no longer the aim. We believe that the Okorot that attacked Ashia are the last remains of remnants of Rame, and you may have been destroyed her ability to inflict her wickedness on the realm beyond the borders of Fog. The shrouded prison will be minimal. Our orders straight from Anarain are to see that they are defeated. It has been decreed that Korotol may remain within Fogbar, utterly imp impotent, imprisoned by the cause because of death which she cannot hope to break. Timmy says that his, his superiors have ordered the attack of Ish on Ashley, including the incident of Korotol's attempted kill and some secret fight remains secret, so the matter has been successfully resolved. That is why I sought you out. While we protect the people of Ashley, we need you to clear the town of the Okorok that now roam the streets. Our only wish is to set things right and see it to it that the circle earns no ill fame because of this incident. This must be done quickly and quietly. The upper rock are presently contained within Ashley, but should they be allowed to leave and move elsewhere, the entire forest effort will be lost, and I fear a great many lives will be in danger. Remove your reputation, Allison, and your first and only choice for the task of no small importance. You understand the need for urgency and the need is plainly evident on Tyranny's voice. And you can readily see why it's necessary for the Great Circle to want to keep the matters of Korotol's attempt to coup and tag on Ashley a secret. The uprising against the Great Mage, despite its failure, would certainly be looked upon as a guilt of enemies, as a sudden fracture within the brotherhood and ultimately weakness. Tyranny looks over his shoulder and then returns his gaze back at you. I'll ask, I ask this as a favor from the Great Mage, he says. Even before Tyranny added the final piece to his pitch, you may, you had made up your mind and told the people Ashley about it. Undertaking the endeavor to rid the invading town of the menace of the Okorok. When you tell the young master mage, 
We accept the mission. His stoic expression is momentarily exchanged for a smile. He knows and tells you that the task must be begin at once, as if he's it won't be long before the Akrak have occupied the town to seek the Akrak the town to seek to last while. Without further delay, the two of you set off for Ashley. The trick for, to Ashley from Trickit Trithic takes longer than you expect, but before you reach the occupied village, you and Timmy stop in the camp and nestled in the hills south of Fogbone. At least two dozen armed men, each undoubtedly proficient in the sturdy weapon with which they are equipped, are closely guarding the displaced and bewildered inhabitants of Ashley. As you pass through the camp, you help, can help before the guards, and only making except no harm comes to people who are temporarily leaving their charge, but also that none of the refugees wander off. So you make a scout on the outskirts of the camp, and you both know that Upper Rocks are locked by the town, which is to be found only a few leagues north and east. After resting a brief spell in the encampment, during which time you meet several of Ashley's residents, you and Jeremy set out to the northeast, heading toward the sinister fog enshrouded wood in the town that rests at its eastern shoulder. It's after just after midday when you catch your first sight of Ashley. The stockaded town, its wooden wall resembling fang built jaws at this distance, stands in the shadow of the cursed wood to its west. A rolling like a mist nearly knee cat knee deep slithered out of fog ball and covered the ground in the region. For quite some time you study the abandoned town and seek any sign of Okarak, you can you can tell us that Okarak, nothing stirs in Ashley. <sighs> Where's the fighting gonna happen? At the edge of the fog covered plain south of Ashley, Timmy takes leave of you and tells you that he will head back to the encampment and await your return. The young ma master major wishes you luck and thanks you. There is one other matter I have not mentioned until this point, and perhaps I failed to see its significance until now, he says after meeting you in Shoulder Cross. But a man from a party by the name of Lyrison uh, ventured into Ashley soon after he was taken by Algorok. At the time, we believed that Corinthal herself had somehow done the curse place upon her and was in town with her army. Lyseron was sent to effect her capture, and the task for which she is quite capable and very well equipped, as you must have already guessed he did not return. Timmy tells you that it's certain that Lyseron met his end at the hands of the Okorok. He carried with him a stoppered vial. The vial filled with red vapor that continually swirls. You should find the Lyseron. Alive or dead, it's quite possible that he still possesses a vial. You must return it to me should you require it. The magic contained within the vial is perhaps the best and last weapon against cold fall. You nod in response to what he has just said. You must be swift. Do not tarry there, he says. His voice is definitely a kindly tone as he issues what is ultimately a necessary one. Defeat the Okorok and return to the vial. If it remains to be found, my prayers go with you, Alison. And so at the edge of the fog covered plain south of Ashley, Tyramy bids you farewell and wishes you luck before turning and making his way back toward the encampment. Without watching his depart, you strike out across the misty ground toward the dark wall of timber that surrounds the taken town. As each step carries you closer to Ashley, your mind begins to focus sharply on the task at hand. Every thought is now bent on liberating the remote settlement from the marauding army of renegade sorcerer. The heavy timber gates which provide only breach and formidable wall that surrounds Ashley. A stand open as you draw up them, your eyes gaze along the town's main thoroughfare, which continue mostly due north to the gates. Much to your surprise, the broad land is deserted, and you are expected to find a town calling with Upper Rock, but your, uh, your first glimpse of Ashley gives you no indication whether or not the invaders that drove out of town's cemetery still remain. Despite some nagging misgivings about the impending endeavor, the sudden urge to question the true purpose of your mission here, you but didn't make your way into the abandoned town. Why are we questioning? What what divination are we thinking? You stand just inside the heavy timber gates of Ashley. To the north, the town's main thoroughfare stretches out of sight, with smaller lanes leading off of it to the east and west at various intervals. The nearest silence hangs over the streets of the remote town. Now and again, the inwards of fall remain a remainder of the town's close proximity to the coast forest to the west. Swirl across in front of you, momentarily obscuring the ground. Let's go left first. Town council building. Um, the town's council building, a small wood and stone structure that appears to have been undergoing a series of renovations, is empty. Great Bethesda, such as the premise, turns up no signs of opera you are been told to occupy Lash. Confident that there's nothing further to see, you once again set off and you resume exploration. Alright, let's go the other way. A large barn filled with timbers at the south as a well kept stable. Check the stable. 
Lad Rock kept stable are empty, not a single horse remaining in any of the numerous stalls that line both sides of the broad central aisle that divides the study structure. No doubt that actually citizens suit the horse of them as they flatten as quick, but there are such that the premise takes shows no sign that Rock Rock even told still occupy. There's only fair to see. Okay, we're in north now. Still, no walker up. Her town's supposed to be overrun. Seems odd. Very odd indeed. Watchtower. No Okorok. Town well. Still no Okorok. What the flip's going on? The military training yard? No sign of Okorok. Stone monument, nothing. Lying in the edge of the street is the body of a middle aged man. His eyes are closing for a moment, it almost seems as if he merely resting peacefully. But his blood soaked clothing and mangled limbs and torso leave you no doubt the gruesome in his mat in this very spot. You quickly recall Terry's description of Lyserian and immediately search the man's body for any sign of the sub of vile, but there is none to be had. Confident the man lying for you is indeed Lyseron. And equally confident he no longer possesses a vow that cheer me asks you to retrieve you say a quick prayer before moving the body into a nearby empty building. The fate of the missing member of Tyrmy's party no longer a mystery, you promptly resume your exploration. Okay, one last place. There's nobody here. As you turn away from the tavern, your eyes fall upon a sight of the street. And they cause your heart to skip a beat. Oh here they are, silently for Filling the entire breadth of the street ahead, number at least 50. And there's some slender, unmoving wooden fi faces turned towards you. What appears to be an entire legion of Walker Rock that attack. Ashley, you marvel the appearance being which the remarkable but deadly magical wooden iron beings were able to fill the street in, in a small while your attention was directed elsewhere. Despite the growing fascination with which you regard the magically created army of Korok Tall, you quickly realize you're in grave danger and must either escape from these. Okorok will face certain death. Before you act to level 5, the Okorok moves swiftly forward, forward to engage you and quickly fall back and assume a defensive stance, position yourself so you only have to face one of the wooden beings at a time. Yeah, they're, they're dangerous. They want me to kill 50 of these things? I mean, 5 down, that's 10%. You maintain your combat ready sense breathlessly waiting the next wave of Okorok to step forward and engage. You must your astonish astonishment, however, the remaining force turn and rapidly disperse, moving off in seemingly random directions that with hardly a sound. In a matter of moments, there's no longer any sign of the strange silent beings. Now fully aware of the fact that Okorok are indeed still within the walls of Ash, yeah, you realize the daunting test of defeating the wooden and iron army has at last begun. Interesting. They cut me down for a thousand or a hundred points already on my SP. Well, restoration. Well, you know, please, thank you. Yeah. The moment you approach your cemetery, you find yourself confronted by five Ocker Rock. The silent and the merciless beings of iron wood, soldiers of Korotor's magically red and army turning your direction, revealing their slender, featureless faces to more than cruelly hewn blocks of wood. Without hesitation, the Venus of Korok start towards you. One does? Yeah. Okay. Okay, mix of three. Mix of and two. And finally. There's another 10%. Alright. Let's see if we're checking the buildings again. Oh, there's a 6 in. Why didn't they just attack me all at once? 
I should do one of these more because I saw I defeated five of them. And they're whooping at me. They're whooping my behind too. No more. Set off again. It's gonna go this way. And I guess it's gonna meet every place I visited before. Rejuvenation, you could help me out when I was really needing you. We made up much better this time. I think we've killed about 50% of them. Let's see if we some rejuvenation now. Game. This is one long quest. This is really long winded at this time, like wow. Alright, north. Okay, we're north first, so let's go south. But the ball here. Joint. We can't some building. Six more. It, right? Mm, restoration. There's nothing else. I visited everywhere, right? I mean, I didn't start here. <laughs> Get me over there, rejuvenation. I don't understand. Oh, okay. Moving along the street comes with some hot as a large aqua rock steps to in your head. A tall iron beat wooden being 
clutches the heavy mace in its right hand and sat towards you immediately. It is only a matter of moments for the towering of its lengthy strides placed in striking distance. Now the leader is shattered. The un is shattered and moving remains of the large opera of lying on the ground at your feet. You step back from the heap of splintered wood and twisted iron and spend several moments catching your breath. Suddenly, you sweat a curious object. Still clutching in the creature's left hand, you quickly pry open the slain upper outside fingers and discover the supper vial filled with the swollen red vapor. It's the vial that Timur Tyranny actually retrieved. After stowing the vial away amongst your other belongings, you examine the heavy mace that the opera shield ruled against you. It appears to be an excellent, exceptional weapon, though quite heavy, and you carefully consider whether or not you should take it. I should not. You retrieved the, the vial and defeated. Alright, take it. <laughs> wow, that's only eight. You realize your mission has reached a successful conclusion. You spend several minutes checking over your equipment and setting the remains of the large opera before setting off to make your way out of the walled town. Your trek to Ashley is uneventful, but you proceed with caution and certain whether any opera still remain within its walls. And as you reach the gates and pass the town, moving into the mist covered plain that extend the south along extend south along the edge of Fogbo, you find yourself thankful you survived this perilous mission. Take great pride in the fact that you were able to defeat the army of Renegade Sorcerers. And had overrun Ashley, and that the victory was likely rendered her important, important to wreak further havoc upon those who unwittingly stand in the path of her malicious plans. You've just only started across the misty plain when you suddenly spot five figures emerging out of the rolling bank of fog to the south. You're surprised to see Tyranny and four of the armored men from his tracking party moving in your direction. Upon catching sight of the young mage, throws up his hands and calls out short as your voice betraying what you suspect as a Mr. Junior surprise and elation. You shrine up and meet the uh, accomplished spellcast in the shoulder class. When you announce success for your mission while simultaneously pressing the vapor filled violence you into his hand, his eyes widen and the four men at his side smile. We fear the worst, he says, his words almost heavily puzzling you. The encampment was attacked a short time ago by a handful of opera. I'm afraid we assume that the unthinkable will happen and yet another has been lost venturing into the taken town. I can plainly see now that I must learn to have a bit more faith in the heroes who so obviously earn the entirety of their reputations. If the young men in Tyranny initiate shoulder class with you after taking a few moments to tell the men rationally was once again safe the city set off for the camp. Upon your return to the camp you were treated with a warm and sumptuous stew containing hair, game fowl and the abundance of potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> your thirst has suddenly defeated by two tall droughts of bitter ale, one of several things Ashley's beloved tavern keep managed to load into his wagon as he and his fellow citizens fled the Okorok. Tyranny assumed the shores of town thought they had nothing for the fear from Koro Tol, and his words seemed to sit well with him. After you finish your meal, however, he takes your side and confesses the notion of Koro Tol no longer poisoning the threat, so that's more firmly rooted and held in fact. She's unlikely to sit idly in there, he says, turning to glance at that line of shrouded trees on the horizon. I suppose you might hope the fangs of some foul creatures from the depths of that would claim her, but that may be leaving too much to the woman of chance. Her power is too great and her ability to manipulate those who can further her sinister cause has been proven time and again. It is beyond any doubt that it will eventually be necessary to deal with the many she will continue to pose. Suddenly Tyranny ty hands you the vapor filled vial given to, you up, given to him outside Ashley. Just perhaps he says friendly smile, but in conservation, one day find your way into that forest. If you do, make certain you to need that. Magic trap within the can be used to capture Corin Thal. Tall, simply unsuffered inner presence in the vapor that spills from his mouth will do the rest. He thanks her to me and knows, of course. I needn't tell you how grateful of this, uh, all, all of the circle would be for her capture. You must take care, though, for Corin Thal Tall is not an adversary for any of us who can afford to underestimate even for a moment. As the refugees from Ashley begin to pack up their belongings in preparation for the relatively short journey back to their walled settlement, Tyranny again makes you the master mage says that he and his men will now return to Asphere, where word of the successful mission on behalf of the Grey Circle and the people of Ashley have been made known to the Grey Mages. Many of the town folk approach and offer you with profound thanks as they prepare to leave, telling you to be sure and stop back to visit them should you find yourself passing through, promise to do just that. As the company of armored men ride off to the south, led by Tyranny atop a spirited white steed, 
You turn your gaze at the citizens of Ashley, now slowly making their way across the hills of north and east, bound for home. And when at last they are no longer in sight, you prepare to set off on the return trek to Trinity Bert before. You take an, even a single step, you find your eyes drawn to the shadowy, ominous lines of a tree to the north. A thick blanket of mist rolls out from the edge of the dark wood, spilling gently across the hills and hollows that lead up to where you stand. You know that somewhere deep in the all tried the confines of the sinister forest the renegade sorcerer's coral toll yet lives bound by the curse that prevents her forever leaving the world a curse that will for now serve to keep those beyond the shadow of the fog world safe from her cruel malice and the danger imposed by her malevolent creations it rests upon the notion to you that those who will witness the attack of Ashley suddenly rest their, your, their, your hopes I guess I can go in there anytime I want to fight her there's no more adventures Hey, but hey, perfect timing, pretty much. Thanks so much for hanging out and joining me. Um, we'll try to figure out next episode if we can go find her and get rid of her, because we don't want stuff looming, right? But hey, thanks so much for hanging out and joining me. Until next time, you know what I'm going to say. Peace.